Hello everyone, this is MTR from MTR Fab. is the next step here. And this is pretty much where we left off last week. I know, nothing's really changed. Um, but the trick is, we're going we're gonna to continue on, but I'm going to tell you how I'm going to continue. And that is knock this whole thing down, and that brings us to a conversation of when you build something like this, you may have to take it apart and put it back together and take it apart and put it back together to get you where you want. So this is an example of I have to do a bunch of welding on this main tube now to connect this section right here. And when I do so, it's going to throw sparks everywhere and, and I really don't like welding on a chassis with the motors attached, right? Because there is a possibility that some of that current is kind of running through the windings of this thing and I don't really know what that does. So I want to keep the motors out of the equation when I weld. So I've got to pull these motors off, got to pull the mower out of the way so I can get under there in a nice tidy manner. And that's why I kind of left this thing temporary together. All I got to do is push that forward and those front wheels should just come right off. Uh, I've got some marks I've left on the tubing here indicating what I need to do to make myself happy. Uh, they're kind of here and there. And in the meantime we're gonna put this on and then we can finish building out the top section. And so the next time you see this it'll be you know just knocked down and we'll be working with just the metal pieces. So that brings me to the Sabertooth 2x32. Seriously looks into doing this they see the stuff uh, on you know, YouTube of other guys doing this with a bunch of electronics and it's kind of crazy and it, you know they'll say stuff like you know oh this runs on Arduino and everybody knows Arduino's cheap and you know they get a bunch of relays they get a bunch of all, all kinds of uh, crazy wiring and, and this is the best thing available and why I say that is because it's cut and dry, gives you way more opportunities than you're going to create for yourself with an Arduino and some relays. On top of that, it's, it's a much better way of controlling DC fixed magnet motors. So this is the option. Uh, there are other drivers. I've never really even looked into them because there's so much good talk about this right here. And, and you know, I tried one and I would never recommend anything else just because this is such a good experience with that being said i think it's 125 or so dollars on uh, i believe the website is dimension engineering dot com uh, and this is the 2x32 they make a 2x60 which i think is the next largest model that they offered at the time i haven't checked it out in a while but the that's kind of unnecessary and you lose some of the functionality and I don't remember what that was so at some point we're gonna hook this up with a USB it's got a micro USB port right there and it's pretty bad little controller I'll show you the software everything's really really refined um, totally recommend this instead of a pile of relays and Arduino stuff um, it, it can be done the other way but you know, the reality is you're going to spend at least half as much money, and, and in my opinion, you're likely not going to end up with half the product. Uh, the reliability is intense here because it's all surface mount and uh, professionally done. So, highly recommend. The other expense of significance that kind of drives the cost of this project, and we're going to see how well this works out, but these are... 7,000 milliamp hour LiPo 6S battery packs. Now, these are pretty hefty, you know, pretty rugged, uh, and then they're not really cheap. I mean, I don't even remember what I paid for these, but I'd say somewhere in the vicinity of like 80, $85. I don't remember. I, I got a good deal on them. I do remember that. Um, so it wouldn't surprise me if one of these is a hundred bucks or so. Um, they're a lower discharge rate, a 15C, but we're not looking for high discharge rate here. Um, we're just looking for continual discharge rate. So the lawn and garden batteries that you buy for cheap, I think those were like 40 or 50 bucks a piece. They were uh, 
easy to find and easy to get, but they're not really designed to, to run DC motors. So these should do just fine with that, and I should get more battery life and get better performance. So this is like the expense. You got you know, at least a hundred bucks a battery, depending on how many you want in the system. And then you're gonna you know buy one of these things, and this radio system's relatively cheap. But you know you're looking at uh, what one, one, two, and then three, twenty-five, and then say fifty bucks for a radio set. So three hundred seventy-five, four hundred dollars, you could get a nice. Uh, lipo setup with the good controller and in my opinion you actually you're gonna have to spend a couple hundred bucks on getting a pair of motors that are good uh, sometimes you can find really good deals you just gotta scout you're you're not gonna probably get one when you're just looking for the day so you may have to kind of wait for a couple weeks to get a better deal than that but you know, so that's where most of the cost is and then obviously you have to have a push mower the tubing is of limited expense. Yeah. So that's kind of where your money's at in this project. Alright, there's the whole frame kind of in pieces on the table and I'm going to tell you the next course of action. So some of this stuff, like these, could easily be welded up at this point. They're not going to move from where they are. I'm confident they're going to stay this way. So the angles are correct and we know they're going to work. So I can finish weld those so they won't fall apart. Same thing with the ends of these tubes. I know this is what I want. I know that's what I'm going to use. So that's going to get welded as well. When it comes up to this section, what's funny is by eye, it looked like I have to cut these tacks free and move this tube that way. But, I will tell you, when you throw a square up on it, it's actually pretty close. Um, so I'm not ready to move it yet. What I want to do is solidify as much stuff as I can before I determine that I need to swing that from where it is. The other thing I'm going to weld up probably now, because I'm happy with its location, is these tubes. I'm going to just weld this all up because I'm happy with the... Um, pin is perpendicular to the rack, the tubes are at the right height, yeah, so this can just get welded up and I'll probably weld this pin too. Um, so like I said, I'm not going to go full weld everything, but I'm also going to clean the bottom of this tube so I can weld this stuff in here and uh, do some layout lines and stuff. And we're going to start moving forward, so I'm going to do some welding and then I'll give you guys some shots of that stuff when we're done. So moving on. Here's an example of just using what you got to get the nice angle on everything. You know, this thing's hanging over one inside, it's hanging over on the other, but it's pretty much just balanced there and I could throw a clamp on here and I can rotate this and get it so I can lay my hand on the table and, and weld on the tube. Uh, there's all kinds of variety here between uh, the, the shape of this piece I'm working with but two with the variety of having saw horses that are open on one side and you know a flat workspace on the other so it's kind of just creative use make it so you can get comfortable and it will be easy to weld that's the best tip I can give somebody who's struggling get comfortable some things I think that are worth talking about right now are how I'm approaching this so I want to show you how I could I could get a bead entirely down one side of this. But there isn't that available room on the other side. So this is where the flatness of this piece up top you can see lays on the table flat, right? If I were to weld up this side, and entirely just this side, this piece would dog ear up and would become a rock in it, which I don't want. So I'm going to approach with caution, and I'm going to weld this side first about halfway up. Any further up, and I'm going to literally have to just grind out most of it. 
and then I'm going to put a fast bead on it going the other direction and just hoping that this kind of stays flat. If, if it's not exactly flat, it's not the end of the world. It's just something to be aware of. And why I'm showing you to, there is because I did it here as well. I told you I wasn't going to weld this, and I didn't weld this side because I thought I have to swing. The directions I left for myself is it needs to tip that direction. So if it's got to go that direction, I can weld it up over here and then hope that my heat pulls some of that out of it. So I fully welded this side of it and that's fine because I can still cut these tacks free and this thing will stand up and I can beat on it with a hammer and get it exactly where I want. So that's another example of me, you know, knowing which direction I have to move stuff and using the heat that I'm going to weld in this process to, to help me get there. So then you can see all the way around these caps is welded so this is a unwire brushed uh, I think this side I wire brushed it um, top right and bottom so that's welded all the way around what I'm pointing out is is that the corners there's overlap it's welded all the way around it doesn't stop and create a stress riser in the middle of the, the joint where you're gonna you know create uh, a crack possibly so all the way around the tubes is welded so now I'm going to do these little legs, and then I'll drop the front front gear up here, and we'll weld those up. So I'm getting ready to fire some welds to this, but the same principle applies. If I'm going to hit it with weld on this side, i got to flip it over and hit it with weld on this side as quick as possible. Basically, going to put a little bit of heat into it a little bit at a time, tack it a couple more times. You can see it was only tack welded on this side. So the first thing I'm going to do start tacking on this side and we'll start getting some heat into the tube um, we'll probably weld this seam up first and then go for the length but if you don't if you did all one side at one time this pivot would totally swing and move in a direction that uh, you can kind of predict and if you were planning for it you could totally weld it up on one side at a time but you, the way I plan for this stuff is, is I, I put it where I want it and then I flip it and, and just make sure I weld both sides of pretty much anything equally so there's uh, the same amount of heat on both sides and they'll counteract each other and it will stay put. The trouble lies when you pound a bunch of heat into one side of a joint, it's going to shrink on that side and it's going to pull the joint. So the objective is to, to put weld on both sides equally and, and in a similar manner and you'll notice your stuff stays put so I wanted to show you guys where I got today I'm all done for the evening the sun's kinda going down so I kinda gotta close this off but what you see here is the back end is now tacked to the main frame um, you guys saw the welding we did earlier I'll show you the back side of one of these brackets it's cleaned flat so it can lay up against the deck nice and flat and then you can see the bead on the outsides fully down. So you see where I only did where I needed to. And I made sure I tacked this side and was all done before I welded the other side. Now, in reference to each other, they look super flat. So, that's what I wanted. But that's why you, you know, gotta weld up one side, you gotta weld up the other. Get it done. So there's that. And you can see, I pretty much finish welded all this stuff up front. I don't need to weld it any more than that. I uh, just kind of molded the joint in the tube. Just clean it up a little bit. Same thing on the back side. The pin I still didn't weld because that'll dictate uh, when I'm done I'll make a final measurement in relation to the wheelbase in the back. Try to keep this nice and square so it tracks straight. Again we welded this side hard on here so when I'm done I can knock this thing around if I need to to change this alignment or this alignment right so you got two things going on there and I gotta make it nice and straight when I'm done so this is kind of an overview of the whole thing now this week I'll, I'll cut all these little pieces to build the rest of this frame and I may cut this off and that's why I want to talk about where you choose to tack things 
These are tacked in such a manner that I can come in here with a cutoff wheel and knock these tacks off and I can have this piece back in my hand in no time. Leave the chunks there and that orients my piece when I come back. Right, so then I would just have to worry about level, not so much left to right. This is where I want it in you know, left to right distance and it's relatively square and everything's good. So just keep in mind when you're tacking stuff together, where are you gonna put a tack that you can cut free quickly. You don't want to struggle. So if you think you're going to move something, don't tack it in a spot you can't get a tool. You know, make it make it in a spot where you can get at it. And think about which way you're going to want to move it. Hopefully you can just leave your tacks there and be able to move it. So on the bottom of this chassis, I'll flip this right over. You'll see I just tacked the tubes down here. That's what the bottom of it looks like. So, we got, you know, the tube ends are all boxed in. Everything's ready to kind of move on and test fit again. And then we'll see how everything works out, if everything looks kind of straight. So, basically, the, the chassis will tell me when I bolt all this stuff back up, is there anywhere I need to move? And this is probably going to be the spot and that changes everything. So... It has its own challenges, but you can see it's much simpler than the last setup, and I think it's going to work pretty good. So guys, this is it for tonight, and I'll see you guys next week. Hopefully I'll have some more welding done, and maybe we can start moving this thing around. Yeah. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoy following this project. It uh, requires a lot of work to do these videos, and hopefully somebody gets some use out of it.